and here and we are in here and now and we are with uh, Steve Struggle today while uh, Ahmed is uh, working and we have uh, some important matters to consider just before an anticipated retaliation for the violation of I Iran's uh, capital city, Tehran, during the assassination of Hania. Hania has been replaced by Sanwa, former prisoner who's released from the Zionist prisons. And he is now the de facto prime minister of uh, Gaza, prime minister, in effect, uh, of, of Palestine. Because the president of Palestine, Mahmoud Abbas, is uh, missing in action, basically. So what we have to consider is what is being planned now by Iran. And it is uh, a plan that is taking a couple of weeks to prepare. So this is becoming something that is larger than would be an ordinary retaliation. Because this time is being used uh, with the cooperation from Russia to prepare Iran for a retaliatory attack from the Zionist state after retaliation from Iran against the provocation made by that Zionist state in the first place. So Russia is helping out because, as they have stated, that is, if the United States is providing advanced weaponry for Ukraine and its assault against Russia and Russians in uh, the Donbass, well, then Russia can do likewise and can help out those who are asking for help against the power of the United States of America. And that's precisely what's happening here. So now Iran is being fitted with advanced uh, detection equipment to determine, you know, where there's, you know, US uh, F-35 bombers, uh, uh, fighter planes um, and missile carriers uh, are going to be able to be detected now. And uh, there has to be a defense, you know, uh, ground to air defense uh, missile system like um, S-400 or maybe S-500 missiles, which can take down any American uh, intrusion whatsoever. So um, after this is all fitted up, one expects that Iran will be in a position to be able to take um, the necessary actions to deter the, you know, the Zionists from attacking Iran ever again and without suffering the consequences that are planned for it by the United States, who have sent the um, U.S. destroyer into the Mediterranean off the coast of Lebanon with its F-35 fighter jets uh, ready to take off and all that within range of Iran. And uh, and uh, on the other hand, you know, there's Turkey, you know, which has stated that if um, the uh, Zionist military is going to take the risk of um, moving into Lebanon to stop Hezbollah from retaliating against um, the Zionist attacks on Lebanon and Syria, well, Turkey is going to send in its military to stop the uh, Zionist military from advancing into Lebanon and push it back which means as well that if they were able to do so, that they would actually have the potential to push into areas that are considered to be Israel <laughs> by the Zionists, like the Golan Heights, but which are part of Syria. So, you know, that can get involved here too. You know, if Turkey were present, they could uh, take advantage of the uh, momentum that they would have achieved in such circumstances to go and retake the Golan Heights on behalf of Syria. In the same way that they have intervened in uh, Syria from uh, from the north there, in which they were contesting not only the opponents of the Assad regime, but also the um, Kurdish forces that were uh, assaulting uh, Turkey from within Turkey. And uh, Kurdistan, of course, is, um, is a, a nationality and a territory that encompasses both Turkey and uh, Syria, Iraq, and Iran. Incredible, you know, mixture of populations there, all of which are misrepresented by nation states, which cannot represent 
uh, more than one nation at a time by definition, and so contradicts the existence and the security of all the minority nationalities therein. Now, so, you know, here we are, we're waiting for Iran, you know, to, to, to move its peace. And I think that Iran is planning on not just a check, they're planning on a checkmate. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Well, there, you know, there's um, a lot to say about um, the situation, Abraham. I I listen to different people, read different things, and develop my own views on the situation. I think that Iran is not in any rush to retaliate. Um, they have to make sure that the country is ready for an attack by air, by I mean by airplane missiles, maybe by fifth columnists in, inside yeah. the country, may, maybe, yeah. and um, that the population is one hundred percent behind the government. They have to have that. Mm -hmm. um, I would think that since the United States supposedly has threatened Iran this week, since this, since the, 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 there's a story out here that claims that the United States to Iran, if 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 if, if Israel, if you attack Israel and counter in, in self defense, we're 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 going to attack you. And that's what those carriers are out there. That's what. That's why they have all those carriers in in the uh, in uh, the ocean out there mm -hmm. to attack Iran. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know if Iran has any carriers to attack the United States, and I don't know that Russia has any carriers. It's going to it's going to end a second in in, uh, in, in the fighting. Mm -hmm. So the acts of resistance will figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm in complete solidarity with whatever they, they decide to do. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't sit here hundreds of thousand miles away, you know, try to be, uh, you know, Sunday afternoon quarterback. Mm -hmm. I, I support I support their right to self defense. Whatever tactics they whatever tax that they tactics they want to take, mm -hmm. that's fine. I heard yesterday. That Israel has some secret military bases in uh, Iraq, Ooh. and that that might be one 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 of the targets uh -huh. uh, of Iran. I didn't know about the secret military base in Iraq until yesterday. Uh -huh. uh, the story, the story of a very dubious story uh -huh. in London in one of the papers there, but they mentioned that Israel has uh -huh. some secret bases in Iraq, which is which which is interesting. They yeah. probably will use they probably use those to attack Iran. Yes. It could be, you know, like um, uh, Zionist military forces in an American base in Iraq. Could be, in, could be uh, yes. Iraq, yes, could be. Could Syria. Be. Yeah, could yeah, be a could mixture be. of the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah and, I heard that, uh, I read that the United States the Biden administration has handed over another additional $3.5 to uh, the Netanyahu government of the Zionist state well, to do what? What are they supposed to be doing with this? You know, continuing the genocide and preparing yes. to pay for all of the uh, loss, economic losses, you know, that the economy has undergone, you know, because they've mobilized all the reserve soldiers to go and take on Hezbollah in Lebanon. They've mobilized um, 100,000 uh, reserve soldiers up there on the border with Lebanon preparing or threatening to invade Lebanon. This is, you know, what their, their bluff is all about. Of course... Well, you know, Hezbollah has, you know, 150,000 or 250,000, who knows, you know, like uh, uh, soldiers, you know, ready to take them on, plus Turkey. So, you know, like, but mm -hmm. nonetheless, the economy is flattened out there. And so they're being supported, you know, to that extent, you know, by the Biden administration still, which claims at the same time that is endorsing a ceasefire and proposing yeah, a ceasefire. Well, yeah. yeah, well, yeah. okay. Yeah, you, know, you, you you can't you can't endorse a ceasefire and then your ally murders murders a person who was at the uh, who was sitting who will be sitting at at the negotiating table, and I'm sure I don't know if you heard about this, but Egypt and Qatar and I think the United States are calling for a Mideast peace conference this this coming week 
they they, they, they <laughs> want to. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw, I saw, I saw it on Telegram, and then I, then I heard the story. They, wow. they're, trying have, they're trying to have a peace conference. If not this week, then next week. Oh, and wow. it, and Israel said, Israel said that it it will attend. Oh yeah, okay, so, yeah, yeah. That means so, that Hamas you know, is not attending. That well, Hamas is not not invited. No, and they I, probably I, will get somebody from the PA there, but. No, I, I, I think if Hamas attends, then they have to do something quite unusual at the priest at the meeting of my that would yeah. I would I would encourage them to do that and let it all hang out. But yeah. anyway, that, that's but just I me. Th- I doubt that they're <laughs> even invited, you know, like this is you know a setup. Yeah, yeah. But the point is, how do you have a peace conference when your enemy Kill when, when your ally kills the uh, negotiator. Yeah. See, I, I think that we have to kind of okay. It's time to take our glasses off or put them on, clean our contacts or clean the lenses, and put it what what's really been happening. There's no way that this counteroffensive of Israel against Iran, Iraq, excuse me, against Iran. Yeah, is not being coordinated with the United States. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and there's no way that um the current counteroffensive in 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 in, in Ukraine was not coordinated without NATO. So these the, these guys all work together, yeah. and for them to say they're for peace, that's just the show and dance. Oh, we're for peace. But yeah. here, I'm going to give Johnny some more guns to kill you. Yeah. That, that just, we have to just accept the fact that they're lying through their teeth, mm-hmm. that they speak in, a, in, in, in diplomatic doublespeak mm-hmm. in order to make themselves look good when they go to, to, to the United Nations and mm-hmm. put forth these proposals or block proposals. That's mm-hmm. all, that's all, all, all you know, diplomatic Double to double speak. They're not yeah. for peace. If you're for peace, then you sit your behind down or find a framework to sit your behind down and find peace. Mm-hmm. In the same way, Zelensky is not for peace. If he would sit his behind down and get for peace, he'd have peace. So he's not for peace, and neither are the Israelis. They're not yeah. for peace. Yeah. They're not. Okay, so we got to do this kind of let's just look at what's been happening and make sense of it. We yeah. can't. Well, we're, 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 we're never peace conference, so you know, Harris won't be any, any different. Trump will be no different because they have to follow the dictates of world imperialism led by the U.S. towards towards the uh, Levant region, and and in and 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 the Levant region, there is no major imperialist presence beside Israel and the United States. That's why Israel has to be overthrown and and, and demolished as a country. Mm-hmm. Or and or the U.S. forced out of the region, mm-hmm. then the region can develop can develop itself. As long as the U.S. is in there with Israel, the mm-hmm. Levant area will will be dominated by by mm-hmm. by the United States. Yeah, and that's what and I, I think so. And and mm-hmm. that's and that's what that's what Israel Israel represents. And the Palestinians are the force they have to oppress and eliminate, just as the as the United States had to oppress. And try to eliminate the native population in in the United States for expansion throughout from from sea to from sea to signing sea, and, mm-hmm. that, and that's, that's the same thing. Israel, that's the same the United States wants to do to Israel. Yeah, that's the same role Israel has within what Israel has for the United States and and, and the Western M- imperialism, and that's why we have support. That's the reason. Whatever they decide to do, if Iran is attached tonight. Tomorrow, next week, or next year, we have to show complete solidarity with not any kind of division amongst us. Because they they want the movements to be divided, and we we cannot be we cannot be divided now. Yeah. Uh, the role of the uh, of the Zionists, you know, goes beyond uh, first of all the Palestinians suppressing a revolutionary population, but it's also a matter of controlling. The regimes in the Jordan and in Egypt yes. is yeah. very strategic. Egypt is the most important Arab country, and also an African country. 
But just as Africa is expelling the French colonial military force there, down to the very last soldier, same is going to be happening, you know, to the United States of America that is going to be expelled from the Western Orient, the Levant. So. And yeah. even now they're very limited, you know, they cannot put in a very uh, major forces there you know each of their military bases only have like 2500 soldiers or so and uh in iraq and in syria but that's enough to control the oil fields in syria and loot the wealth of syria which they then uh, use to pay for the mercenaries that uh, they control as well and in fact uh, the zionist military is a mercenary force on mass it's just, you know, uh, manipulation of a, a given minority population in which uh, a certain, you know, fraction faction are cleaved off and turned into instruments, you know, and paid off as mercenaries. This is much like the capos in the death camps, you know, under the Nazis. And there, you know, 70% of the capos, you know, the Jewish police that worked for the Nazis, 70% were Zionists. So, you know, the similar phenomenon is happening here in, in which the Zionists are in, put into control of the situation to suppress the local population, which was seeking its independence from colonial rule. So now what they've set up is a permanent colony in the name of the Jewish people, which is false, because even right. now only 45% of Jewish people actually live there, and the rest of us don't have a vote. So they claim to represent us and even tax us, you know, for donations. And we don't have a vote, you know, and this is called represent, uh, taxation without representation. And, it, you know, usually that engenders a revolution. And this is what the Jewish Socialist Bund is seeking to achieve and is organizing for is a Jewish revolution against the Zionist state, both in the territory of Palestine and the Zionist state has exists in the Zionist parties and control the Jewish communities uh, everywhere else as well. Okay. And in spite of the old Jewish labor bond, you know, which is so intimidated that they end up, you know, it's like supporting the Zionists because they're afraid of being denounced as traitors. It's pitiful. Wow. Yeah. That is pitiful. That is pitiful. That's not good. Well, tell me, um, any, uh, what kind of updates have there been in the last period and the and the Jewish building reaching out to Jewish people around the world with the slogan of Jewish Jewish revolution against Zionism. What kind of what kind of progress has it made? Oh, oh. I have a new uh thing that's happened. Here they are. Here they are. Now, I've mentioned previously this book that it was published by Yale University Press called The No State Solution by Daniel Boyarin. He's one of the subscribers to, a, you know, the Jewish Bund's uh, news lists, uh, Jews who speak out. And this is an endorsement of the Jewish Bund, this book published by Yale University Press. <laughs> I've spoken about that before. Now, there is a new additional book that has come out called Revolutionary Yiddish Land. Yiddish is my language, actually, and it's the language of the Jewish Bund. And this is a graphic from a Jewish Bund election poster. So there's another book now as well. And this is published by uh, Verso, Verso Press, a French uh, publication, but it's uh, an English translation of the French book. So the Jewish Bund is making advances both in the uh, English and in French. And here is, you know, a book directly on the history of the Jewish poem. And then there's a, a, a third book as well, which endorses the Jewish poem. So in terms of the uh, intelligentsia, the Jewish intelligentsia, there's been a breakthrough in terms of the significance and an appreciation of what the Jewish Bund has to offer. Because the Jewish Bund doesn't does not have the sectarian position that was initiated by the Social Democrats in a book that I'm reading online by Lars Fischer, in which he talks about the socialist response to anti-Semitism in the German imperial state during the Second International, like Mehring, Kautsky, 
uh, Bernstein, they always had, you know, very confused, you know, positions on uh, Jewish national identity and on what anti-Semitism is and how to respond to it. And in fact, you know, how they endorsed it, in effect, because they thought that it was part of uh, a capitalist uh, mode of production. <laughs> a Jewish identity is supposed to have been part of the, you know, capitalist mode of production. You know, this is, you know, as far as they went, you know, in terms of their appreciation. They were worse oh. than even Marx, you know, in his Zerjudenfrage on the Jewish uh, uh, on the Jewish question, in which Marx said that the uh, Jewish people are anomaly, which uh, will be liberated from their uh, economic caste position uh, with the arrival of socialism, which will remove the necessity for them to be uh, the functionality that they do perform in the capitalist system. And in, in that matter, he was uh, there was a contradiction because he then postulated that the uh, the Jewish national bourgeoisie, which was sent, was centered in banking, and yet it was identified as being a capitalist function, even though it existed prior to capitalism, and was not the essential nature of capitalism, which was the corporate entity which existed as a novelty, as an innovation of capitalism. And this was the subject of a big debate between Rosa Luxemburg and, and, and Karl Bernstein, in which Rosa Luxemburg pointed out that, you know, finance capital was not the controlling capital. You know, finance capital was controlling capital in feudalism. Capitalism well. is different. And she argued and proved, you know, the capitalism was based upon, you know, capital production, you know, and investments, which were subject, you know, to the... Uh, to the periodic crises, you know, that she um, analyzed further, you know, then Bernstein proved that he was wrong to count on the uh, social democratic program, which could moderate or reform the capitalist system to become socialism. And she proved right. that it could not be. And so, you know, this subject turns into this, you know, like big thing. But that book by uh, Daniel Boyarin uh, is... Uh, is uh, no the Lars Fisher book, you know, on anti-Semitism, you know, is a, is another breakthrough, you know, which backs up, you know, the Jewish Bund's position that the Jewish identity exists uh, uh, as such on tant que tel in French, the French uh, legal term, and is not related to any particular economic function, and even uh, and even if there was a significant uh, 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 portion of the Jewish people who were petty bourgeois in a German state as viewed by Marx, nonetheless, this is not reflective of the Jewish people as a whole because the Jewish working class had moved from the German Rhine Valley to Poland when they were invited there by the king 500 years ago because they needed workers, you know, to bolster the economy of Poland. So that left behind a petty bourgeoisie which showed, displayed an unbalanced view of what the Jewish people are actually. And it was the Bund that became the dominant political uh, force and the vanguard of the Jewish working class in Eastern Europe and in Russia, which helped to make the 1905 revolution, which was just a, you know, became the predecessor for the 1917 revolution. So the I Jewish sure one is being appreciated on these various uh, levels, you know, both historically uh, in terms of uh, political theory uh, in the one state, in the no state solution book, and in terms of uh, the role of uh, the Jewish Bund in opposition to uh, uh, both the assimilationist uh, mode of thought um, uh, and his petty bourgeois backers and the Zionists, which sought to um, overcome the limitations and the, the, the catastrophe of assimilation by uh, assuming the functionality which created the problems for the Jewish people in the first place, and that is the nation state, you know, which was initially conceived of by Hegel in 1648, and uh, which uh, led to all of the various wars, you know, in Europe, and the millions of, uh, of uh, casualties that resulted as a result of that particular concept, which was adopted by the Zionists some hundreds of years late, and trying to institute that uh, model, the European model, uh, for itself in a colonialist fashion at the same time. You know, totally unhistoric, you know, effort 
that is only bolstered right. you know, by the resources you know provided by the United States of America, which provides for in the Zionist state and its um, security uh, and turning them into a bunch of mercenaries and indoctrinated to that effect as well. But the Jewish opposition is advancing, even amongst the Israelis. And the latest you know, poll that I saw indicated that about 70% are opposed to the continuation of the war and they want the return of the hostages and they want an end to the war. And they have figured out, you know, that an end to the war means the return of the hostages. They finally figured that out. <laughs> so that's well, where we're at. Um, I hope that you will share those books in the description below. Mm -hmm. A few of the titles because our viewers need to have a chance to read these books. Maybe we can even have some discussion about them in the future. Pose some questions. Do a little, do a little background reading ourselves because this is this sounds very fruitful. Well, the uh, the book on the, the social democrats and their faulty analysis of anti-Semitism and uh, and national identity as a result, in general, um, is um, I'm turning that into a series of uh, videos. I'm at the ninth video now in which I'm doing a reading of the book online and then interjecting with commentaries as I go through the reading of the book. So that resource is becoming available immediately. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's available at uh, both the, um, the Bundes Movement um, uh, YouTube channel and on my YouTube channel. So I'm doing exactly what you've asked for. Excellent. What about our our allies on the college campuses and in community organizations. The university start up this month to mid next month. Yeah. Any word yeah. on anything occurring that you know I have I've heard nothing. I don't know. Apparently there weren't any conferences during the summer, which which is a shame. But perhaps mm -hmm. there were perhaps there were meetings that we didn't know about that, that also could happen. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's hope there was. Because mm -hmm. the university is opening back up. Um, I know in the, in the United States, the federal government is trying to outlaw or restrict the demonstration, saying that they are uh, harmful to Jewish students, mm -hmm. um, the, using that 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 uh, canard to mm -hmm. uh, to try, uh, try to to try and limit or uh, or or the, or quash the the pro pro Palestinian pro peace. Um, conversation, but this is a worldwide movement. Yeah, right and, here. Um, it's a worldwide movement, and it isn't going anywhere. And I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to the first demonstrations or mm -hmm. encampments or meetings held held on campuses soon. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, because of the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act, you know, and the repression uh, supposedly in uh, for the being used uh, um, to uh, support the security of the Jewish students, quote unquote. Well, it should be, you know, not in our name and Jewish Voice for Peace. And if not now, we should take the initiative in, in initiating, reinitiating the student protests and, and uh, setting up the encampments again with right. big Jewish banners as well, you know, and, you know, put it into their face, you know, like, look at here, this is what we are. And this is, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the real voice of the Jewish people. And what, you know, they think is the voice of the Jewish people are just, uh, <clears throat> Yeah. It just, you know, sort of, you know, you can call it Protestant Judaism <laughs> or Jewish Protestants, you know, something right. like that, you know, because they're right. not, you know, really Jewish. <laughs> they're you right. know, Protestants, you know, working on behalf of, you know, Christendom and this imperial master, United States of America, but they don't right. even realize it, you know, so they can be confronted in that manner. And then they wouldn't, you know, know how to con deal with that at all, you know, because it's That's true. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that we see more of that. Um, I don't know. I um, the plight. The plight of Palestine is the plight of, of, of the world. As 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 goes Palestine, so goes the world. And um, I think it's important for our listeners, our viewers, to remember this is not a news report. Mm -hmm. We're giving analysis to promote social change, to support, to prove, to promote social revolution mm -hmm. around the world, in mm -hmm. solidarity with the, with the Palestinian people's move, movement for self determination and and uh, complete freedom, mm -hmm. and that's our words are are 
our words are being shared with you for that purpose, not just for news 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 reporting, mm-hmm. but to, to but to uh, promote <coughs> to to promote to promote critical thinking mm-hmm. and to yes. spark you into positive positive organizational work. Yes. And this is a, a video that should be shared amongst other activists. This is right. a video for activists. We're uh, organizing activists with strategy, and we right. have uh, we have <coughs> the experience to be able to do that. You know, uh, together with the uh, with the activists, you know, who are who are learning to operate, and are learning to do so in an empirical way. You know, just sort of on their own. You know, they're just picking it up. You know, out of the blue. Right. Right. And, you know, they have some sort of, you know, idea that this was done during the 60s. You know, that's about it. You know, that's about as far as, you know, their strategic thinking has gone. Right. So, you know, we have to take this on, you know, more seriously. This is yes, what we're doing yes. here. It has to be taken on, as you say, in conferences as well, in which right. we have the uh, multiple, you know, uh, uh, I- ideas, you know, from various people that come together in the fusion of thought that creates a strategy and the power to mobilize, uh, uh, you know, the students in mass as a body and not as right. a string of individuals, you know, are picked off right. one by one. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I look forward to Palestine as the vanguard of the world revolution. In Gaza, that's where it's happening, you know, that determines, sure you know, whether or not the, the world social revolution is advancing or is going to be repressed in this historic period. We're at a turning right. point. You know, this is going to we determine are, what's going we, to be happening everywhere else in the world. Yes. Right, right, right. The lessons, the lessons are, the lessons are, are universal from the, from the struggle in Palestine. I agree. Yes. Thank you, Steve. And we call on our viewers, you know, to share, share, share. And, uh, and we are here to build, build, build. That's and, right. Uh, and uh, that's what we're doing. And it's working. But we have to so. um, we have to uh, take ourselves more seriously. Right, right, we do. I agree. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Good to speak with you again. Thank you. As always, till till uh, next week. Yes.